All right, everybody. So in our last video, we're going to talk about the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system. If you've ever taken any type of, it could be intro to psychology class or even intro to neuroscience. If we were to just focus on the parasympathetic nervous system, this is a figure that's going to detail all of the things that are going on. Parasympathetic nervous system is calming. So rest and digest. Think your eyes are constricting. Right? Uh, it's stimulating some saliva production and more steady breathing. It stimulates bowel release. Again, the body is essentially getting ready for either calming itself or eating. Uh, it stimulates digestion. It inhibits glucose production. It contracts the bladder. Uh, whenever any patient is activated in any way, and this, these, this is for uh, therapy clinicians, uh, typically one of the fastest ways to get someone in a state of, of calm and relaxation is through the breath. And so there are a number of different types of breathing or meditation exercises that can literally calm patients down within a matter of seconds. And so that is definitely important to note. If you look at the sympathetic nervous system, so you're going to see essentially almost the opposite of what's going on. Sympathetic thing, fight or flight, or maybe even freeze, right? So whenever someone gets into a dangerous situation, you have a number of different types of people. You have the people who are going to fight, the people who are going to fly, get run away and get away from that situation, or the people who are going to be so overwhelmed by the situation that they may just freeze. And it looks like they're not even doing anything, but their sympathetic nervous system fully activated. And so what's going to happen, you're going to have a dilation of the pupils. So your pupils are going to get bigger. It's going to inhibit saliva production. Uh, digestion is going to go down. It's going to stimulate secretion of epinephrine and norepinephrine, which are your stress hormones. Uh, that is going to contribute to an increase in heart rate, promoting faster breathing, increased oxygen to the muscles. The reason that I wanted to bring this up, the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system, really good psychoeducation to give clients uh, especially for those who are going through PTSD, anxiety. Uh, whenever someone is in a state of chronic stress, this is essentially what's happening to the body. Anytime your body goes into stress, it needs to go right back down. You know, that's homeostasis, right? There needs to be some type of balance. And for some people who are in chronic levels of stress, their body is constantly in this state. And so you can imagine for someone with PTSD who's having intrusive thoughts, nightmares, and flashbacks, as well as avoiding you know certain situations or places, as well as their body is in this state of high activation all the time, the smallest thing can trigger them off. They can either get into a state of fighting, cursing. Uh, they can get into a state of running away. They can get into a state of freezing. Uh, and so when this is happening months and months and months at a time, uh, there are going to be a number of levels of treatment, things like cognitive processing therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy, eye movement desensitization, reprocessing therapy, EMDR, uh, narrative exposure therapy, written exposure therapy, uh, different forms of breeding, tation, relaxation modules and tools to use, uh, different types of ways to kind of deal with those intrusive thoughts through cognitive processing and dealing with cognitive distortions that are happening. There are a number of evidence-based ways to help people with any of some of these conditions that I just mentioned. You always want to recommend them to see a specialist or a medical or mental health professional to get the right diagnosis and also to get the right treatment plan. These are just some general things to be aware of in your practicum sites or clinical rotations about some of the things that are going on in the body and uh, specifically in the body, but also, as I just mentioned, could also specifically be going on in the mind as well. And so I know I didn't really necessarily go deeply into some of these different like stimulating of the epinephrine and the hormones, inhibiting the digestion right here. Uh, you also have, as I mentioned, uh, increasing the heart rate right there. You can see the pumping heart and uh, increasing some of the saliva you can dilate the pupils. So you can see how big those pupils are. Overall, once again, those are some of the things that are happening uh, from a parasympathetic level as well as a sympathetic level of the nervous system. That, that concludes uh, some of the lectures that I wanted to also briefly discuss. Again, these are not meant to diagnose. These are not meant to use clinic these are just meant as educational resources, tools to use, reminders of perhaps what to look out for. Uh, if you have any comments, please put it down in the comment section below, but I will see you all in the next video.